right, welcome back. We're hitting the hardwood for some high school hoops. Let's go to the Alamo Convocation Center. You see behind me the Little League Boys basketball team tipping off against Jefferson. Both squads took some time to get into a little bit of rhythm there, but we had Jefferson's Adrian Reyna working the glass. See my guy right here grabbing the rebound for the bucket and the trip to the line and and one there. Lanier's Chris Mejia answered back with a smooth one-handed floater over the block there, and it's two for Mejia there, and it was buckets like that that led the Vokes to a big victory as Lanier wins it 42 to 38 over Jeff. How about Sam Houston, where the 20 win Alamo Heights girls basketball team trailing the Hurricanes early by 11 when our cameras got to the arena. The Mules put up a fight with Talia Andrews, knocking down some big shots. See that run right there behind me, but the quick transition offense of Brianna Murray and Marche Slack leading to some nice points there. Check that out. Very nice take there. The Hurricanes get a big upset here. 44 to 40. So what does that mean when, what does this win mean for a team like Sam Houston? It means a lot to me because I really love this game and for us to come together and win, I'm happy for us. It just took a, a lot of focus. Um, you know, we know every game is going to be tough. Everybody's going to play us hard, uh, but we have to lock in mentally and be focused uh, to take on anything. Uh, and I thought, I thought for the most part we was able to do that and that helped us secure the win. All right, congrats to the Canes getting that dub there. College football news now and a big change up the road in San Marcos. Record-breaking quarterback TJ Finley is entering the transfer portal. Finley recently announced his plans to return to the Bobcats football program, but a day after Texas State landed former Arizona quarterback Jaden Delora from the portal, Finley is now out. TJ saying on social media that, guess what, business is business. Delora was very productive during his time at Arizona and earlier at Washington State, but TJ Finley just let the Cats to their first ball game victory. Football coverage brought to you by Davis Law Firm. All right, this Saturday, Texans rookie quarterback C.J. Stroud will go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the NFL's MVP favorite, Lamar Jackson. Houston faces the top seed Ravens in the AFC Divisional Playoffs. The Texans have never advanced past this round, and the last time that Baltimore made it to the AFC title game was all the way back in 2012. Baltimore has the best rushing attack in the NFL and gave up the fewest points in the regular season. The Ravens are the full package, but Houston has plenty on its side, too, like C.J. Stroud and also so that momentum from his first playoff victory. He played better than I did from my, my rookie game. I say that definitely. Uh, he was throwing the ball all over the field, making things happen. Um, he did great. I thought they were a very good football team week one. I think uh, if you go back and check your records, you'll you'll find that. You know, so they've uh, they haven't surprised me or they haven't surprised us. They've they've done pretty much what what I thought they were going to do. They're a very good football team. They're very talented. They play very hard. CJ is just doing a phenomenal job. Um, uh, Nico Collins, Michigan guy, you know, man, he's, he's a go-to guy for him. All right, can't wait until Saturday for this one. The Texans are nine-point underdogs right now, and the forecast is calling for highs in the mid-20s at around kickoff, which is going to be around 3.30. Baltimore beat Houston in the season opener, but you know what? Anything can happen here. You can watch this game right here on Case at 12. It's going to be cold out there in the Northeast. Yeah, they've been testing all these football players lately. <laughs> that video earlier we saw from Buffalo, that was crazy, where they had fans shoveling the snow and stuff. Shouldn't be that situation out there, but yeah, still going to be a little cool out there. A game to watch. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, there's more to come. Some lawmakers are looking to increase tax breaks for parents. Why the legislation is facing an uphill battle. And conflicts overseas could affect your bottom line. The concern over Gas prices, yes, that's coming right up still ahead. Now to a story we've been following all morning. The closures at SAISD. A total of 30 SAISD schools forced to close today because the district has to make repairs at those campuses. You can see this list of campuses on your screen. This is directly from the SAISD website. And developing here later this afternoon, it will address, that being the district, the closures during a news conference. That is scheduled to happen at 2 o'clock this afternoon. And again, this all comes after several complaints about cold classroom conditions from parents and students. We will, of course, keep following this story and bring you updates on air and online as we get them. And another story we still are following closely, the weather. The weather. But hey, 
36 degrees officially. Now we're warming things up even more so. By the way, yesterday's high temperature was 36 here in town. So we're already there. And we're just going to keep warning, warming with all of that sunshine in place. So 40s are expected here into this afternoon. Here's a look at those temperatures across the region. We are all above 32 now, so that is absolutely great news. 40 already in Pleasanton, 41 in Catula, 41 in Eagle Pass, 37 in Rock Springs, 40 out east in Gonzales. So that scene that you saw out there on live cam, that's going to be the view throughout the remainder of this afternoon. Around 40 for us here in town. Uh, over the next 25 minutes or so, we're going to climb to that 40 degree mark. 46 at forecast high temperature, and then still will be chilly if you're stepping out for any evening plans. Thermometers falling into the upper 30s later on tonight. Tomorrow, around 33 degrees, the forecast low. A little bit of patchy morning fog is expected, but after that clears, plenty of sunshine. Highs about 20 degrees warmer in the upper 60s. But don't get used to it because here come more of those changes. That next front works in overnight Thursday, early Friday, cooler on Friday, above freezing though, which is good. This front not as strong as the Arctic one that really packed a punch earlier this week. Windy on Friday though, after that boundary passes us by, gust to 45 miles per hour. One more hard freeze early Saturday, 40s this weekend, but you'll notice by Sunday we start to introduce those rain chances back into the forecast. So we're really going to talk in detail about that setup with the increasing rain chances early next week. We'll get to those details coming up a little bit later on. All right, thank you very much, Mia. Well, Special Counsel David Weiss is pushing back against Hunter Biden's allegations that he was only indicted on gun charges because of right-wing bias. President Joe Biden's son is seeking to have the three gun-related felony charges thrown out on the theory that they were only filed because Weiss caved to Republican pressure to indict him as the 2024 campaign got underway. Weiss rejected those arguments. Also, for the first time yesterday, Weiss publicly released a photo of the Colt Cobra 38 revolver, you saw right there, that Hunter Biden is accused of illegally buying and possessing back in 2018. Biden has pleaded not guilty. A shipment of medicine for dozens of hostages held by Hamas is en route to Gaza. France and Qatar arranged the delivery by brokering the first agreement between Israel and the militant group since a week-long ceasefire in November. The deal also includes the delivery of additional medicine and humanitarian aid to Palestinians. The war in Gaza shows no sign of ending and has sparked tensions across the Middle East, with strikes and counterstrikes in recent days from northern Iraq to the Red Sea and from southern Lebanon to Pakistan. In the nation's capital, members of Congress are racing to avoid a partial government shutdown. Funding expires on January 19th for key government agencies. That includes military construction, veterans affairs, transportation, housing, and the energy department. The rest of the federal government is funded until February 2nd. To prevent a partial shutdown, the House and Senate must pass a funding extension and send it to the president's desk before Friday's deadline. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer says it will take bipartisan support in both houses to pass the measure. And a bipartisan group of lawmakers want to enhance the child tax credit and restore many business tax breaks. Democrats like the $78 billion tax package because it would increase the child tax credit. The credit wouldn't be as generous as a temporary one issued during the COVID-19 pandemic in 2021. Republicans are on board because the measure would also restore Trump-era business tax benefits from 2017. Despite the bipartisan support, many consider it a long shot. It wasn't negotiated by congressional leadership and no, has no clear path to a vote at the moment. It's also difficult to pass such measures during election years. Well, if you love your daily glass of OJ, maybe think of swapping to an actual orange instead. A new analysis of prior studies found that drinking a glass or more of 100% fruit juice each day was linked to weight gain in children and adults. Doctors say that it's likely because you can easily gulp down too much in one sitting. The issue at hand is how the juice impacts the body. Fruits have natural sugar that slowly releases into the body, but when drinking it as juice, it floods the system. Doctors say fruit juice should be seen as an occasional sweet treat and not a way to quench thirst. The News at Noon will be right back.
Welcome back. While attacks by Iran-backed militants in the Red Sea have effectively closed one of the globe's main trade routes to container ships, now oil tankers are starting to avoid the southern Red Sea. And gas prices could begin to rise. CNN's Jen Sullivan breaks down the impact. The sound of UK fighter jets lifting off part of a U.S.-led effort to go after Houthi militants based in Yemen. Backed by Iran, these militants, who say they're taking revenge for Israel's war on Hamas and Gaza, have been attacking container ships in the Red Sea since November. It's one of the world's most important trade routes. The violence has forced commercial shipping companies to avoid the area. And now, oil companies are following suit. What you're seeing is a number of those oil tankers are no longer uh, traversing uh, the Red Sea. Oil prices are already starting to tick higher. On Friday morning, U.S. crude climbed as much as 4.5% to $75.25 a barrel. We see that the shipping is more restricted in the Red Sea. The price of oil is going up. Gas prices remain relatively low for now. According to AAA, the national price of gas was $3.07 on Monday. But low prices may not be around for long. We use about 100 million barrels of oil every single day, and that will certainly have a, a, an effect on price. Summer says roughly 18 million barrels of oil travel every day through what's known as the Strait of Hormuz. But the situation in the Red Sea is so tenuous that oil tankers and commercial ships are taking a totally different route all the way around the Cape of Good Hope in South Africa. That adds days to the journey. Energy prices could spike and so could the price at the pump. For Consumer Watch, I'm Jen Sullivan. All right, well, we are above freezing. So you take a look at live cam. So I feel like we're actually seeing the light at the end of the tunnel here. Yeah, I think a lot of us uh, probably breathing a sigh of relief now that the worst of it is behind us with three days of morning hard freezes, even that ice that we had early Monday morning. Thankfully, road conditions improved really as early as that afternoon and have been a lot better ever since. All right, speaking of the hard freeze, this morning's official low temperature 18, well below the average, but believe it or not, we did not break the record low. The record low for today is 15. That was set back in 1930. We're in the mid 30s right now, headed for the 40s this afternoon. That also will be below average in terms of ending the day in just a couple of hours later on this afternoon. So we'll talk about the changes in temperatures. Yes, some more winds headed our direction and rain chances after this. Welcome back. I think we've become experts on layering our clothes this week. <laughs> yes. Because we've had to. <laughs> yeah, I was outside earlier doing an interview and I was like, oh, I was like doing that whole thing. But I did have some layers on. Hopefully we'll be able to shed some of those. Yes, I, <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, I walked out to my car uh, right before the newscast started. It's kind of deceiving because there's all that sunshine out there, but temperatures are still really, really cold. So in my mind, I forgot for just half of a second, I walked out. Nope, let me go get my jacket really quickly <laughs> and then let me go back outside. Uh, but yes, we are thawing things out this afternoon, even more so tomorrow. But still some ups and downs when it comes to those temperatures because we're actually going to see another front move in late tomorrow night and early Friday morning. So that's the first first here out of your weather headlines above freezing this afternoon. We're already there headed for the 40s, even warmer tomorrow in the 60s. But then that cold front knocks us back down into the 40s this weekend. Behind that boundary, winds are going to pick up 40 to 45 mile per hour wind gusts expected, especially into Friday morning. Then as we head into late this weekend and even more so early next week, we're going to see some decent rain chances return to the forecast. And I want to talk about this that specifically here for just a little bit. So as we take a look, zoom this out, look at the lower 48 and what's happening in the upper levels of the atmosphere. We've got this area of low pressure near the Pacific Northwest, the Northern Rockies. This is what's going to drag that first front into our region tomorrow night. Notice by Friday, it's moving eastward closer to the Great Lakes. That scoots even farther eastward. And by late this weekend, our attention then turns out west to the second area of low pressure that dives down closer to the Four Corners region. As this approaches the state of Texas late Sunday and even into early Monday, we're going to start to see some pockets of upper level energy work into the state ahead of this next disturbance. So that's what allows us to introduce these rain chances back into the forecast. We've got it about a 30% potential as early as late Sunday afternoon and into the evening, a 60% chance into your Monday. 
And then I do think a few scattered showers and even a thunderstorm or two will be possible as we head into Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. Now, as of right now, it's still too early to talk exact rainfall totals, what we could see by the time all is said and done, but it is looking like we could see a few inches, multi inch totals across at least portions of South Central Texas. Whatever we do find certainly will help out in terms of the drought situation. We still have extreme drought in place that encompasses Bear County and surrounding areas for places like New Braunfels, Bernie, even stretching over to Bandera. So any little bit helps. Not expecting any rain out there today. Nothing but blue skies. Temperatures in the mid to upper 30s in many locations. 37 in New Braunfels, 37 in Bernie, 39 over in Kerrville. Winds generally out of the south at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. That was one of the reasons why this morning felt a bit different compared to yesterday morning. Wind chills were not nearly as bad because we didn't have those gusty, brutal winds in place. It's not just us. It's been dealing with this colder Arctic air over the past several days. We were talking about that a little bit earlier. 31 in Little Rock, 25 in Louisville. As you take a look up near the Pacific Northwest, 31 in Casper, 16 in Boise. That's where some of that snow continues to slowly work its way farther off to the east. Even a little bit of lake effect snow over there near New York coming off of both Lake Ontario as well as Lake Erie. Again, we are expecting nothing but sunshine throughout the remainder of this Wednesday. 43 degrees by 2 p.m. A forecast high near 46. Then we start to see those temperatures drop back off after the sun goes down. 44 at 6 p.m. Upper 30s expected as early as 9 o'clock later on this evening. I do think some of us could briefly touch that 50 degree mark mainly south and west of San Antonio later on this afternoon. Low 40s for places like Kerrville, Rock Springs, 48 in Gonzales here later on today day there as well. Briefly into tomorrow morning, a little bit of patchy fog is possible. Southeastern Bear County near Floresville, Pleasanton, even Carn City across portions of the coastal plains. After that lifts out of here, more sunshine, upper 60s expected. Then we see that front move through tomorrow night, windy on Friday and cooler. A hard freeze early Saturday and then those rain chances return next week. So still a whole lot to monitor when it comes to the forecast, even though we are warming things up for the most part. Of course, we'll continue to keep you updated all those updates on your KSAT Weather Authority app. We're going to take a step aside and be right back after this. All right, welcome back. Uh, we have a Vineyard Ranch Elementary <laughs> hanging out with us right now. Hi, guys. Yeah. Okay, we're on it. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, well, if you are a foodie, I know many people are, Restaurant Weeks uh, might be something you want to check out. It's going on right now through next Saturday, the 27th, and producer Haley Powers spoke with the team in charge of the event who tells us how the event helps our city grow. Restaurant Week is really born out of this amazing opportunity to uplift restaurants. Culinaria has offered that special attention 12 years now, hosting two Restaurant Weeks a year. Dedicated to show San Antonio off as a premier food destination, the nonprofit partners with 100 local restaurants to put together three-course prefix meals for brunch, lunch, and dinner. It is the perfect opportunity to go out and try new restaurants or some of your favorites and without breaking the bank. President it and CEO of Culinaria, Suzanne Toronto Etheridge, brunch. says they specifically host restaurant weeks in January as many people are coming off the holidays and aren't going out to eat as much. We want to keep those local guys in business and, you know, really thriving in our community. They're so important to us. They really contribute to the confluence of culture that's found and interwoven into San Antonio's food. That food culture highlighted again in August for the second restaurant week. Organizers picked August when the oppressive heat is keeping people inside or summer breaks have people traveling before school. I think the great thing about winter and summer is that it's completely different flavor profiles. Restaurant weeks began January 15th and will run until the 27th. The three course prefix menus range from $25 to $55. No signup is required, but reservations to any of the restaurants participating are recommended. Haley Powers, KSAT 12 News. Now, Valentine's Day is less than a month away, and if you're looking for chocolates for your sweetheart, SA Live has you covered. All right, Fiona and Mike found a local chocolatier. I need that job. <laughs> How do you get that? Uh, this chocolatier will knock your socks off. Here's a taste. Pat Willis from the Swiss Chocolate Shop, so best you can get in the world, basically, right? Correct. It's the gold medal winner from the Italian Pastry Chefs Academy. Okay, and to get your hands on it, you have got a discount as well, right? Yes, SA Live on SwissChocolateShop.com. 
shop.com. That's shop spelled S-H-O-P-P-E. We will tell yes. you where you can find him at all these great chocolates. So as David was saying, and we've alluded to, we want to know which weird food, you know, do you like with chocolate or unusual? Combinations. Yeah. Kind of like you said. Bacon. Chocolate covered bacon. I had that once on this show. And it's, it was so good. It's, I mean, bacon chocolate. You can't go wrong there. So, <laughs> all right. Now back down to reality. And we're talking about healthy foods and meal prepping. Jen, what's going on? Hey, chocolate's good, right? You know, moderation, right? Yes. We are here at Local Health Market where they do the cooking for you. Now, these meals right here, you got a chicken enchilada casserole, fiesta chicken bowl, and they are all curated by the nutritionist who owns it here. So we're going to tell you all about that and how you can get some healthy meals to go. And look at what we're stirring up here. Of course, the Vaquero Cook-Off is coming up in February, and we are going to be making some Fideo Loco today and talking about the junior competition. Yes, indeed. Oh, that looks so good. And what to wash it down with? A local brewery. They have brewed their own beer and also their own non-alcoholic beverages as well. We'll tell you all about that. Yes, all that and more when SA Live continues in just a few minutes.